Welcome to the Whale Scout Podcast, everyone. My name is Whitney Negebauer. Today, we have Joshua Zeman on the show, and we are going to be talking about the loneliest whale, the search for 52. Um, welcome, Joshua. It's so wonderful to have you on today and to be able to talk about your film. Thanks for having me. Much appreciated. So the film talks about this whale that I think many of our listeners are familiar with the story. Mm -hmm. um, it was a whale that was found to be calling out at a different frequency uh, than other whales and sort of provided this mystery among scientists. And really the internet sort of took off with its story and it was dubbed the loneliest whale in the world. Uh, because nobody, uh, nobody else out there in the ocean could really um, understand or communicate with with this whale. So, um, can you tell us a little bit more about how you learned about the story of this whale and why you decided to make a film all about it? Uh, good question. Um, so, I like many other people had heard of the story of the loneliest whale. Um, I think I first read it in the New York Times and also from an animal behaviorist named Vint Berga, who's writing a book called The Soul of All Living Creatures about what we can learn from, how we can learn to be better human beings kind of uh, from, from animals. And I was really just floored by this story. It like really gut punch affected me. Uh, I had been through a breakup so <laughs> maybe there was a little bit of that going on. And then I would ask, you know, over the course of like the next couple of weeks, I would be like, hey, you ever hear the story of the loneliest whale? And they'd be no. And I was like, oh, it's this whale that swims to the ocean calling out and it's never received a response. And people's reactions were just, they were, it was unbelievable. Much like mine, like people would like, they would cry or they would get goosebumps. And so I'm a storyteller and I've done a lot of documentaries and told a lot of stories. And so I wanted to know what was it about this story that made people react in the way that they did? You know, was it the idea of loneliness and that's a reflection of our own fears? Um, you know, we all fear dying alone or or calling out and never receiving a response. Or was it that or, or was it, you know, the idea that this was a whale? You know, we're not talking about the loneliest turtle or the loneliest frog. You know, we're talking about the loneliest whale. And so was it the fact that whales, we've had this special unique relationship with whales throughout our history and, you know, they're so big. And so we, as a result, feel kind of minuscule and, and, and we're humbled in their presence. Or was it the idea of the whale swimming through the vast ocean that kind of made this tale of loneliness so much more desperate uh, or just the fact that you know whales we are, we akin whales to ourselves in a kind of spiritual and sentient sense so from that i started to like really delve into like huh i wonder you know if there's a story here and then i learned about the mystery of sound in the ocean and and whale song and and how cool whale song is and just how even our present day world has been shaped by whale song. And so I was like, well, wow, like maybe can we actually go find it? <laughs> and and that kind of launched, you know, this the film that we have now, which is this expedition to find and kind of demystify the tale of the lonely as well. So I wanted to talk to you a little bit more about how you were able to um to, to launch this expedition and to how to get scientists to be on board with your search to find one whale in the vast ocean. Um, at first, Bruce Mate was a little bit apprehensive. We sort of pumped the brakes a little bit and wasn't exactly sure uh, if this was a good idea or not. But eventually, uh, John Callum Bokitis and John Hildebrand were um, willing to go out to sea with you and your team and to, to go find this whale. So how did you convince these scientists that this was a good idea? Um, I, you know, I think it was probably like one of those, like, it's just so crazy, it just may work ideas, you know, and I probably wouldn't, they knew I wouldn't leave them alone. But, you know, on a more serious note, you know, these guys love to go out and do science. And because we had this great, kind of through line of the loneliest whale you know and i think it really got the general public caring and the scientists recognized that they recognized the power of this kind of ambassador of ocean stewardship 
And so when we got Adrian Grenier to come on board and to help us with our Kickstarter, when DiCaprio came on board and gave us a little bit of financing, when we suddenly went back with them with $400,000 and said, hey, look, we can actually go on this expedition, I think they jumped at the chance because they love getting out there. This is this is really where they're learning. It's it's not, yes, a little bit in, in, the, in, the, in the lab, but it's out there in the field. Also, and this is really interesting, I, I think you can tell from the expedition, it's a, it's a little bit indie, you know, it's a little bit DIY and I'm an indie filmmaker and, you know, we kind of embrace that. And so I think the set of expectations and the pressures were different. You know, this wasn't like a big IMAX Nat Geo expedition. This was a little bit kind of smaller. And so I think they, they, they that allowed less structure, if you will. So I think that allowed them to go, to use technologies that they've never used before and to like try things versus making sure it was absolutely gonna happen. And when you try things, you know, necessity is the mother of all inventions. Suddenly they felt free to like kind of really go all out. And in doing so, we actually found more science. We actually did more interesting science than we would have ever done before. So I think it gave them an opportunity to really experiment <clears throat> and explore in a way that they never would have before. And, and that, I think, they really enjoyed that. They're like, you know, we've never done this. Like, we've never actually tried to locate a whale acoustically with an old sonar buoy and then, and then confirm visually that that whale is making that sound and you wouldn't believe how complicated it is so i it was really so much fun at the end of the day and and really inspiring to watch these guys do this science right you, you were out there and while you were searching for one individual whale there was actually a lot of great research happening at the same time on a lot of other animals in sort of using those animals to try to hone in on an individual 52. Can you explain sort of how that worked and what were some of the most exciting findings that you uh, that you made and what were some of the biggest challenges when you were actually out on the water? Well, first of all, like one of the most surprising things is like you would talk to these scientists, you'd be like, okay, so you know the whale does this and you know the whale does this, right? And they'd be like, uh, no, actually, we don't know that. And I was like, how do you not know that? That's so like, isn't that obvious? And so first of all, there's so much that they don't know about these creatures. There's so much conjecture. We think we know, but they're not 100%. And, and as a layman coming in, it's like, wow, I had no idea that you didn't know that for sure. And it's like, yeah, these creatures are huge. <laughs> they're not in captivity. They're out in the middle of like deep, deep water and they're really hard to experiment on. So any chance to go out there is an opportunity for them to learn so much more. Um, plus trying to find a whale, listen to it, and then visually confirm that that is the same whale who's making that sound is really hard because whales call out underwater. So they have to call out underwater. You have to identify that. Then you have to wait to see which of the whales come up. Chances are they're in a pod with other whales. And so you have to be like, I think it's that one. And then you have to mark that whale, have it go down, have that call, reconfirm again. Then that's with like a walkie talkie to the mothership. It's like, it's like a, a jewel heist, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's crazy. And so you're just like, this is amazing. You know, you have an acoustic team on the mothership. You've got a ribbed hull inflatable and they're trying to put a tag on the whale. The whales are moving, by the way, like 20 miles an hour, <laughs> you know, and they could go underwater. And then it's not like they're always like, you know, they're only coming up to breathe, right? So that's your only visual. And so they breathe, they go down. And then you're like, where is it going to come up? But sometimes, you know, every, every now and then, like they'll go down and then you've lost it. So it's just like, it is an unbelievable game, you know, to try and do this. And it's just outside of the fact that you're on a boat <laughs> where things go over the board, where you might get hungry, where you or a piece of equipment might shut off or, or something like that. Outside of all those things, you're trying to do this. So the whole thing was incredibly surprising, but also so kind of like beautiful, like going out there and seeing a huge amount of whales all at once. It's, it's great. So much fun. So you mentioned earlier that Leonardo DiCaprio is involved with this film. Can you explain a little bit more about that and 
sort of maybe share what some of his motivations might be? Yeah, you know, uh, so basically we put up this Kickstarter uh, with the help of Adrian Grenier. Um, and interestingly enough, Adrian saw, you know, the, the power of the Lonely Whale and from that created this organization called the Lonely Whale, uh, Lonely Whale Organization. And, and he's been doing great ocean stewardship with this organization, like stop, like stop sucking campaigns and things like that, the straw campaign. So we did this Kickstarter and, you know, people were interested, like, oh, the Lonely Whale, they're going to go out and try to find the Lonely Whale. And I don't know how he heard about it, maybe over Twitter, but suddenly, you know, we got a, a really very generous donation from his foundation. And, you know, we called up and said, hey, would you guys be willing to uh, come on as executive producers on the film? And they said, yeah. And, you know, he had done before the flood in Virunga. You know, he's really, look, some people may have issues with celebrity you know, using their um, status or whatever to um, put forward these social campaigns. I think it's great. In fact, I think it's necessary. It, you know, if, if if God gives you this talent for whatever reason, you know, you know, you got to use it. You got to do the right thing. And I, I, I'm so indebted and also so so moved by the power in which they can help change the world. You know, it is incredible, the, the amount of power. And if that's what it takes, I don't care. You know what I'm saying? Star, celebrity, politician, in, YouTube personality, I don't care what it is. You know what I'm saying? Use what you got and make the world a better place. Now, the sort of underlying theme of the film you know, does have a, a conservation message. Mm -hmm. um, can you share a little bit more about what you wanted viewers to walk away feeling and thinking? Well, first and foremost, I, I making a movie about this whale has made me a better human being. I, I learned how to be a, a better human being by doing a film about a whale. A whale helped me to be a better human being, basically. Um, I, because suddenly you, you understand things like empathy and connection in ways that you never thought you would otherwise. Um, you realize that it's not about yourself and, 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 and we are interconnected. And I think that's definitely one of the themes of the film. For example, Songs of the Humpback Whale, which is, you know, one of this uh, famous album about humpback sounds and 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 you could see how interconnected we are because when this album came out in the 60s uh it really you know was a huge thing in popular culture you know it made it onto the charts uh and you know people would take the album home and they would listen to it and they would like be reduced to tears listening to the sounds of these humpback whales singing and they suddenly they said oh my god what sings more beautifully than we human beings you know and it's these whales and suddenly they turned around and they said oh my god we got to stop killing these whales look at the beautiful sounds that they make we can't do that and that started the save the whale movement and that started greenpeace and those two movements have led to the green movement of today and that green movement of today is what is going to help us hopefully survive in terms of climate change so you could see how interconnected even just whale song is to our whole existence. And so it's that interconnection that you realize is going on in this world. You know, there are whales that call out to each other and that sound travels at a frequency over 13,000 miles across the globe and bounces back to us. Well, that's what you and I are doing right now. You know, I'm on one side of the planet you know, and a little frequency is going out into the great big void of blackness and it's hitting you and it's coming back, you know? And so that interconnectedness is really impor important. And, and of course, once you watch the end of the movie, there's one more message, which is how important it is to listen, you know, because if you don't listen, you may miss things that are out there. And if you do listen, you may find them. And I, I think now more than ever, we all realized it's, it, 
how important it is to listen to people. And I, so I think eventually that's probably the most important message. That's what's going to make us be better human beings. And that's what I learned from 52. Well, it was wonderful talking with you today. Can you share with our audience where they can find more information about the film, where they can sure. watch it and when? So the film is going to be coming out uh, this Friday, July 9th, um, theaters all across America. And then it'll be on BOD the following week on Friday the 16th. Um, for more information, you can always follow me at Josh Zeman on Twitter, and that's at J-O-S-H-Z-E-M-A-N. Uh, I'm always, my DMs are always open, always lo loving to talk to people on Twitter. Uh, and of course, they could go to lonelywell.org for more information about the film as well, and then to kind of follow up on other um, kind of conservation things and activities and um, activation plans that we're doing regarding ocean stewardship. Wonderful, thank you so much for talking with us today. Thanks for having me, much appreciated.